forward motion calms you down. We're agitated. We want to act. Forward motion actually calms you down. Moving in a direction is something the brain, there's two, we take in a ton of information every second, and there are two major filters for this information. One is fear. The second is your goals. And those are the two main things that screen most of the data that's coming in. And how you want the equation to work in your favor is you want more focus on your goals because you'll get less fear as a result. One thing about forward action that I think, uh, cause we didn't really touch on forward action too much. If some of you are listening to this and thinking, okay, well, this sounds interesting, you know, like frontal cortex, ACC, limbic, you know, writings, creativity, spontaneity, seals that think about it this way. The circuitry that we're talking about, about narrowing and pushing away spontaneity and going through this narrow trench with trust that on the other side of that, there's this kind of open vista where you're going to be able to access new things and flows and things like flow state. That process has to require forward movement because, and normally I don't talk about research from my lab too much because I'd rather, it's more fun for me to talk about the work of my colleagues, but, you know, we published a paper in Nature 2018, we meaning Lindsay Saleh, a graduate student in my lab, she did the work, I just oversaw the work, where she discovered that in response to a feeling of threat and anxiety, a visual threat, but it could be other kinds of threats too, animals and humans have these circuits too that put them into one of three modes. One is to freeze. Now, freeze doesn't necessarily have to be frozen and paralyzed in fear. It, we can also call it pause, where you're assessing your options. And there was another response to threats, which was to run away and flee. And then the third response, which was forward movement. And what was really interesting about forward movement is, first of all, it has its own distinct circuit in the brain. And when animals or people engage in forward movement, there's a literally an activation of specific limbic to cortical networks that are required for more forward action. And the cool thing is, is she found what's called a collateral, a little side road from that pathway in the brain to the area of the brain that releases dopamine. And only through this forward action could dopamine be released. And so forward action, even if it starts from a place of intense discomfort, stimulates the release of dopamine which has an amplifying effect on moving you, your ability and sense that you can move forward. It takes what would otherwise just be uncomfortable and it allows the forward action to start becoming something more of comfort or even pleasure. And this is deeply rooted in our evolutionary biology. Think about it. Any animal that got hungry, it's not just gonna get dopamine when it gets food because why would it head off in one direction versus another? It would start foraging and sniffing and say, oh wait, there's a scent or if it's a sight hound or it's a human, there's something I see. Now, well, no, guess not. Every time you think you're on the right track or you sense you're on the right track, you get a little dopamine drip. So think about like breadcrumbs all along to the big payoff. We have misunderstood dopamine as the thing that you get when you win the race, when you win the battle. Dopamine is designed to pull you along, but that's the key. So forward movement is going to engage the right circuit. So you don't have to know all the neuronomenclature if you do great, but if not, forward action is what it's all about. And this speaks to Rich's example earlier as well. So I, do, you know, I do a lot of traveling for work, and you know, when it's four or five cities in a row, it gets really exhausting, and it's really, you know, it can get, you know, you're not sleeping. And you're, so I'll often just to like get through airports, right? I'll a I'll rely on the forward action, but I'll set myself little chunk goals. Just make it to the gate. Just make it onto the plane. Just make it into the seat so you can go to, right? Like little tiny goals and the combination of like achieving these little ridiculous goals while moving through an airport, it exhausted. It just makes, I get the dopamine from the forward movement with a little bit of dopamine from like ticking off my goals. Oh, I got to the gate and it, you know, it's just enough to sort of keep you going under conditions of exhaustion or stress. Yeah, instead of it being like this, a degradative process across the day, it's like, this or even like this i've traveled a lot with rich and so and it's really interesting to see just how he moves through general spaces he's always doing this like checkpoint thing like i'm <laughs> to imagine this he's like we're here then we're gonna go to there we're gonna go there and i don't have ts i don't have uh, tsa free and i don't have uh and they're always pulling me aside because i travel with like a gnc's worth of supplements and so i always get secondary screen and so i'm always getting delayed and by the time i get to the gate I'm just exhausted, depleted, and angry. And Rich, like, even though he's had to wait for me 20 minutes on the other side of the security check line, he's just marking off these milestones. And he, he's just, honestly, I'm not just saying this because he's my friend, but 
I've never seen him have that kind of depleted stress response. It's a bit, and I've, I've started applying it in little things. I, I've done it in my laboratory and in my scientific career, but the ability to, to wick this out into multiple domains of life is really powerful. And I think a lot of people have a little bit of a shame about doing it in environments that don't seem directly related to something crucial, but it's precisely because you don't want to be depleted by things that aren't crucial that you need to apply this process in environments that are, we're all forced to deal with. It's depleting unless you think, oh, this, you can actually turn it into a bit of a fun process as long while adhering to the steps. So Divini and Kotler know yeah, how to do this uh, inherently. I know the science, but I don't know how to do it. I don't, <laughs> well, implement, and let me I don't implement it. I know how I to want, do it. I don't implement it. I want to also add this because I want to hopefully normalize it a little bit. Um, because, I, and I think Andrew, you'll agree with me because we've talked about this, but you know, that step forward that you're talking about, it does not necessarily have to be physical. It can be cognitive. It can be a decision, a conscious decision to, for example, uh, sometimes the right decision is to do nothing and just collect more information. That could be a conscious decision in the dopamine case and move forward. I'm making a decision to stop and collect more information. It could, in fact, sometimes be a step backward, you know, so forward, I don't want people to understand or misunderstand that you have to be moving forward no matter what. I mean, if the edge of the cliff is one step forward, you may not want to move forward. You may want to move sideways or backwards, or you may want to make a decision to stop and collect more information, right? So, so in times of uncertainty, the idea is forward movement, either physically or cognitively, so that you are at a minimum, changing perspective. I mean, once you change perspective, whether you move forward, back, or there's like the mountain climber who, you know, climbs up, you know, the face and realizes there's nothing up. I have to now go down this down and right to get the next possible handhold, right? So it's not ne it's not necessarily in the direction of of the peak. He has to move, he or she has to move down and right so that they can get another look at what's available, right? So that is also technically forward motion so so there's a bunch of different nuances some decision is i'm going to stop do nothing collect more information uh, because you don't want to run into the uh into the fire without thinking if what you've heard on flow research collective radio has been helpful please consider doing us a solid and leaving us a review on apple Podcasts, spotify or wherever you are listening to this Reviews help us connect to a wider audience so we can get these peak performance principles out to more people. Music